But I think it's fair to say that we've trumped all of them because joining me live this morning, Manic Street Preachers frontman, Mr. James Dean Bradfield joins us. James, good morning to you, Bonadar. How are you? Hello, Jay. How are you doing, sir? Very good to have you, James. Listen, how does James Dean Bradfield spend St. David's Day? Uh, we're going to be in the studio working today. Uh, so I think we might have a bit of a Welsh playlist in the studio today for some, with some music for about an hour. When we have our, we usually have about a half hour snooze just before countdown. <laughs> 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 so today, perhaps we'll, do, perhaps we'll do a bit of a Welsh playlist. Today. Fantastic. Listen, thank you so much for joining us on Radio Wells today on this very special day. What about when you're on the road with the band and it's St David's Day? Do you have, like, a Welsh day? Uh, kind of... I don't know how much is that. God, I've, I've toured so much. It's all lost in the mists of time. But, um, yes, no, I've always worn a kind of a daff or a leek. I've always preferred a leek myself. One of my uncles always used to wear a leek on St. David's Day, so I've always gone for the leek. I don't know why. Yeah. You know, that's the one thing I love about you, not just the music, but also not only you great blokes as well, but I think I speak on behalf of the Welsh nation, James, because wherever you go, the Welsh flag is very proudly displayed and you know i get the feeling that welsh culture runs through your veins just how important is it i know this is probably a daft question and many people have probably asked you this many many times but just how important is it for you as a band to come from where you come from the locality and the country of wales um i think when we were young uh we kind of when we were teenagers uh when we formed the band in the mid 80s it seemed like everything was falling apart around us so i think to be honest, first of all, I think we tried to escape where we came from uh, because we felt as if everything was just being destroyed. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, what happened? As soon as we left, uh, kind of our Welshness became more pronounced, I suppose. Um, as soon as we left and as soon as we started touring the world and as soon as we started living up in London for great periods of time, uh, we gravitated towards home a lot yeah. more. I mean, I've spent time living in London. Uh, Sean spent time living in Bristol, but Nick's never moved away. He's always been the gravitational force yeah. of our Welshness to a certain degree. But um, that's what happened, you know, as soon as we went away and started touring and living in other places, we kind of felt this otherness. So I don't really know if that's real, but it's the way we felt. And um, it became our gravitational force of our, of our identity. Yeah. Um, you know, after, after the first album, after that time of just being away, it became very important to us, and it became something that grounded us and meant something to us. It's a natural well. thing, though, isn't it, James, when you think about it? Because I think about the times when I'm away. I can't stop talking about Wales and home. I just think that's a natural way of dealing with it. I don't know whether English people, Scottish people, they probably do. People from Northern Ireland feel the same way. Yeah, I think so. I mean, kind of like, I, I think... Be careful not to make ourselves exclusive in terms of being passionate of, 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 about where we come from. But is all I know is th is that kind of I, I think as soon as st Nick started having that Welsh flag on his big uh, kind of like bass stack on stage, you know, it, it started drawing us together somehow. And look, we're talking about intangibles here. We're talking about things that you can't really explain, and they sound willfully romantic. But you can't, if you go away, I think, you, you know, we passed that test. You know, we went away, we travelled, we lived other places and we couldn't wash, we couldn't wash away kind of like where we came from. And I think I still mainly think about the value that I grew up in. I, I sincerely believe that for better or for worse, the place that you grew up in just utterly shapes you. It and does. some people try to shake that off and some people try to, you know, try to jettison what they grew up with. But I think it just kept coming back and it kept it kept informing us, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we're going to talk about music in just a moment and libraries in particular. But listen, I've been asking the listeners for some questions and they're flying in. Happy to take some questions from some of your biggest fans. Yeah, go for it. They're, they're amazing. They're lovely. This is Karen in Wakefield. How are the preparations for the tour going, James? Which songs are you looking forward to playing the most? But she goes on to say, I also want to say james i would never have met my husband if it wasn't for the mannix you've changed my life in so many ways thank you for everything over the years do you get a lot of that before you answer that question by the way um yes i think a lot of people have met at our gigs uh definitely uh kind of kind of general outsiders that were kind of fused together at some of our <laughs> concerts um and it's just lovely you know it really is cool and yeah we are getting ready for the uh you know we got the everything must go anniversary coming up this year you know we're re-releasing re re everything must go and um we just we've just started playing those songs again that's why i'm going back to the studio after this and i'm i'm just looking forward to playing everything must go the album you know we're finishing at the liberty stadium on the 28th of may and i'm just really looking forward to that i'm yeah. really just looking forward to playing those songs because those songs breathe and they really do have 
an amazing memory for us. That album was something that came out of something which was obviously we'd gone through the trauma of, of Richie going missing at that at that point, and it, it felt like something good had landed in our lap at last when we actually you know wrote and, and, and released that record. Can you settle a row between me and my pal? Because okay, we so so the scene is 1996, right? And we'd had a few too many before we got to the gig. At CIA, did you support Oasis? Yes, we you did. did, didn't you? Yes, we did, because we'd been around for quite a while and, and then the Britpop thing started happening and we kind of got co-opted into that Britpop, you know, Britpop movement and then obviously there was the people subdivided it into Cool Cymru, etc. And, and they were just kind of good times because we'd been around for a long time before that. You know, we'd released the Holy Bible, Motorcycle Emptiness and it was kind of strange to be on the coattails of this thing, this thing called Britpop and, and we found ourselves supporting Oasis on our own patch yeah. um, in Cardiff and uh, kind of, to be honest, it was just great to watch it Oasis brilliant. because they, it was great to see a band just make a big glorious mess of something and which they did in a spectacular fashion. They were just great people to be around. Well, well, some of those tracks on Everything Must Go, do you think one of the reasons why people loved you uh, that night, it was amazing, you, you, you know, you did a great set as well. Do you think it was because Oasis, let's face it, I mean, you know, they are brilliant, brilliant records. Yeah. They were incredible live. A lot of their records basically have be, were and still are anthems. And, yes. you know, there are, there are many of those tracks on, on Everything Must Go which are very similar to that. Do you think that was the reason why you kind of hung on to, use your expression, hung on the coattails of that Britpop thing? All right, we didn't hang on to it. We got co-opted into it, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> but kind of like... um. I think, yeah, it's, we'd come off the back of our third record, The Holy Bible, which was very much a, a kind of, a very much more a kind of, uh, just a very conflicted, nihilistic kind of record. Mm. And then, obviously, coming off the back of that, we wanted to do something else. We wanted the music to breathe. We wanted people to sing along. Um, and, you know, Design for Life, you know, I suppose, it, yeah, I can't deny it. It is anthemic. You know, Everything Must Go is anthemic. If you tolerate this from the album after... It, but we'd kind of started in that fashion with You Love Us and Motorcycle Emptiness to a certain yeah. degree. So it was kind of, it, it'd been there, you know, utterly it'd been there. And uh, I suppose, yeah, it was just for once in our life, the right time, the right place, off the back of, of, of very bad things happening. We were in the right time and the, and yeah. we're the right time and the right place. It happens so to us of, all, though. It was good happens luck. to everybody, doesn't it? Yes, uh, it this is. is JL Flag. This is nice. Which bands and artists are you currently listening to? Which is a question I was going to come on to, but JL Flag has beaten me to it. Who do you like? Uh, I'm just going through a big old 70s rock phase at the moment. Um, I just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of looking, I'm looking to the past for my musical references, which might sound quite retro in it. You know, it might sound quite self-defeating in a sense, but I'm really going to... I'm listening to lots of old Rainbow and lots of old Roy Buchanan at the moment. So, yes, modernity has passed me by this year so far. <laughs> Is there anything in the charts, any of this pop stuff, no. you like at all? No, but I don't make a big point about, you know, just actually being disgusted by it i'm just uh i was never a gigantic pop fan when i was young i was always into guitar music or or stuff like pub, public enemy you know and you know pop just isn't for me mm. um, but it's no big deal just like rugby league isn't for me i'm yeah. a union boy yeah of course you are and um, what about catfish and the bottleman they're from clan did no do you like their stuff? Oh, but that's not this year. They, that, that's, that's, that's kind of like, you know, that was last year and beyond that. Yeah, no, I was, I'm really happy for them. It's just really, really good to see it. Yeah, a guitar band just doing something at the Brits. Because yeah. I did watch the Brits the other night and, and yeah, it felt like a world away from the Brits that I was part of for all those years. Um, and it was good to see a band like there on there. It was gratifying to say the least. Yeah, you talked about union and league. I know you guys love your sport. James in Yorkshire says, Chase, can you please ask James, do they have any plans to do any gigs at Euro 2016 or busk on the streets like they did for the Lions Tour in 2013. Are you going to Euro 2016? Well, let's be honest about this. Busking in front of rugby fans is a bit easier than busking in front of football <laughs> fans. It's going to get a bit wilder, you know. With um, I'm not sure. I, th I think we, we'd we like to, um, but I'm not sure yet at the moment. I mean, God, you know, Nick is so over the top excited about, you know, what's actually happened with, you know, Welsh football, mm. as we all are. And, you know, we definitely, I think we want to go to some games, but we're still talking about that. We're still talking about the Rugby World Cup in Japan, where, we, where we're still really popular. We're talking about the next line, still in New Zealand. So... I think we're becoming a band that kind of plans our life around sport. Around sport, nothing wrong with that. As you know, that's what I do for a living. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you could, you famously, you famously changed the lyrics to "Everything Must Go" to "Bobby Gould Must Go." Yes. 
Well, uh, nothing wrong with that. That was the mood. Of, that was the mood of the nation. You were the only ones no. brave enough to say it. I mean, I've had some. T- I've, uh, let's, play, let's be very, very honest. I've, I've had some terrible times following the Welsh football side. I remember again beaten by Holland in Eindhoven's ground. Uh, kind of like seven was, one, wasn't it? I think it was six Did one or score? seven one. Uh, oh, no, we, I, think, I can't remember. And we, I was, uh, we were touring the Super Fairy Animals at the time. That was a terrible night. Every time Holland scored a goal, there was just this terrible high energy track, and the sea of orange just went hoi, hoi, hoi. Uh, I went to the San Siro game in Sparky's era when we lost what was that 5-0 4-0 one, four nil. Yeah. Um, where it all kicked off you know I was there for the pole boating night as well you know at the, at the old stadium so I've had some terrible times in Welsh Grim football. times yeah um, it's kind of but I, you know it just actually just still can't actually quite believe what's happened with the Euros it's just it really just has made it's given us such a kick it's given us such a boost that we are thinking about doing things around it but we just I think we're so excited we can't sort our heads oh, you've out you've got to be there it'd be great to see you there let me just finally talk about libraries because in recent months you and the band have been pretty vocal about potential council cutbacks to library services you wrote a letter to Cardiff Council saying any proposed cutbacks to libraries would turn the city into a quote cultural wasteland my love Local library. I live in Cardiff. Was threatened too. Why did you feel it was so essential to speak out on such a big issue? Oh well, first of all, I sent that letter as part of a. It was part of many people. It was about a hundred letters from from certain people. So it wasn't just me sending that letter. They just kind of picked my letter out, which I, I kind of didn't really want. You know, it was just I just wanted to be part of the support of people that that didn't want the library closed down. Look, you know, I I I, I kind of I go there with my daughter to that library. You know, and you know, and I used to go to Blackwood Library all the time when I was young and I sit there you know they were little kind of it made it made, you, made me feel important when I was young when I used to go to the library on my own and I'd read a book which I probably only understood an eighth of but that's a part of taking control of your own life and and trying to educate yourself because I think you, you can you can go to school and you can try and reach your targets but for me it's really important when you, you know, the most pivotal moment of your life is when you actually start trying to teach yourself things and libraries were a massive part of that for me now people might say that that has changed because you know everybody can do you know people have so much access to knowledge you know at their fingertips in their bedroom etc in their own house but i still feel as if kind of like going to the library has that the, the motion the actual very act of going there and actually just doing something on your own, just the whole effort of doing it, of doing that, is still something which is very symbolic, and and uh, and it just seems to get, it seems to give you momentum in your life. Um, and of course, I was still using the library with my family, so it was just something that I was using. Um, and to be honest, you know, at the end of the day, I don't really think the letter did that much good. I certainly didn't want it to be on the cover of a paper. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to end with a text from Joe. This is lovely. She's listening to us in Staffordshire. My question for James Jason is, what is the proudest moment of the band so far she goes on to say she's seen you 36 times so far and she's looking forward to the liberty stadium gig if there's one moment james oh okay, well, god number one i should give that lady she should have a free pass for life really she should, <laughs> <laughs> she should. um let's see if i can sort 36 that out. times that's amazing yeah no um i suppose for me it, 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 it was back when Motown Junk was released um, you know the four of us had driven up and down to London in a in a halo white transit van where the back door was flapping on the M4 and it didn't work and kind of when we went up and we recorded Motown Junk in a studio in North London that, that Maggie May by Rod Stewart had, had been uh, recorded in and when we had the first play, playback of that um, in, in this studio called the Power Plant in um, I think it was ni- late 1991 when we listened to it for the first time time for me that was a proudest moment because we'd talked each other into a fever into a frenzy of of convincing ourselves that we were amazing <laughs> you know, we were deluded and slightly crazy but actually the first playback of that in the studio when we recorded Motown Junk for me was the proudest moment it was the first time I really realized that you know perhaps we you know we could you know we could walk the walk you know we actually were perhaps as good as you know, as we thought we were Amazing. James, listen, thank you so much for your time this morning. I really appreciate it on, on, on such a big show on Radio Wells. I'm very grateful for you talking to us. And, and I'm, I'm there at Euro 2016. It'd be lovely to have a, have a drink with you out in Lawns or wherever it may be. Well, if we're out there busking, you can run co- crowd control. Okay? <laughs> I'm sure the fans You're of big other, lad. You can do it. I'm sure the fans of other Welsh clubs would love to see me trying to do crowd control. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lee James. Lovely to talk to you and give Cheers. our best to Sean and to Nikki as well. Thanks so much. Great stuff. James Dean Bradfield, live on BBC Radio Wells. Let's get the weather. Here's our wine.